Hey guys, it's Mark with Hallmark Pool Supplies. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how we change seals in the high performance OptiFlow pump, which is made by Pentair. And by the way, if you guys see anything that you need, I will have all the parts for this pump linked in the description below. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to remove the volute. In order to do so, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the pump here. You wanna get yourself two flathead screwdrivers. You're gonna notice some tabs here. You've got one here, there's one on the bottom, and of course there's two on the other side opposite of these two. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna stick our flathead screwdriver in the first one, and then we're gonna stick our flathead screwdriver in the second one on, on the top. And I'm gonna pry, and as I pry, we can see that the volute is coming forward. And at this time, I wanna hold the volute so it doesn't slide back. And now I'm gonna stick my screwdriver in the bottom one on this side, and now I'm gonna stick it in the bottom one on this side. And I'm gonna pry, and as I do so, this volute will come forward. I'm just gonna wiggle it off, and then it comes off. So basically what we were looking at is we've got these tabs here, and they've gotta be pushed in so that we can pull this off. But trying to push all four evenly at the same time is almost impossible, so I like to do the top two pull this forward, then do the bottom two, and then we can pull it out. And that's what I've done. And so when we do pull this off, we've got to be very careful. There is an O-ring that's in here that actually goes on this piece. And a lot of times when we take that off, this is going to fall off. We want to push that on there and make sure that that stays on there. And we don't lose that because when we put it back together, that needs to be on. So we're going to set this to the side. And now we're going to get our drill, and we're gonna remove the four screws on the housing here between the seal plate and the volute. Okay, so now we got the four screws and nuts off. We're gonna pull this off. We're gonna take our screws off here, make sure we don't lose them. And then we've got our volute. We can now take this and set that to the side. Screws here. And now we're to the back where the impeller is. So what we want to do now is we're going to turn the motor back this way and we're going to get our Allen key. We're going to use this size Allen key here. We're going to stick it in the back and make sure she's locked in. And then I can come around to the front and we can unscrew the impeller. And as I unscrew the impeller, by holding it back here, it keeps it from spinning. Now we've got that off. Now we're down to the front part of the seal. And what we're gonna do is we're going to remove this. And as we remove this, the seal is off. But if you'll take note, the rubber seal on this seal is still on the shaft. We gotta make sure that we get it completely off because if you put the new seal on this, we will have a problem. So sometimes this will come off and sometimes it'll stick like it's doing now. So when that happens, we gotta make sure that we do pull this off because we don't want to leave that on there. We're going to set our impeller to the side, and this piece actually goes here when the seal is intact. Usually that does come off, but this time it's stuck, so we've got to make sure that that's off. You want to make sure that that shaft is nice and clean. So we're going to set our bad seal there, and then now we have the inside seal that's inside the seal plate. Now take note, there is an O-ring here, we want to make sure that that o-ring is good and we want to make sure that it's in place that it didn't get moved or when we put it back together that it's intact and it's not pinched or it didn't fall out uh, and we'll get to that later but right now we've got to remove this some people will take a small flathead screwdriver and this is a shortcut and they'll stick it in here and they'll pry it and get it out and that's one way to remove it you got to be careful because this is plastic. We do not want to go in here and start prying and mess up the seal plate because then when you put the back part of the seal in here, it may cause a leak. So we want to be careful. We don't want to damage this. So the proper way to take this off is we want to get ourselves a star bit like you see here. I'm going to put this in my nut driver. And if you'll take note, there are four screws indented in these notches here and we're gonna stick our nut driver in and we're gonna to start to unscrew. And it's very important, we're gonna loosen the seal plate from the motor, but we're not gonna pull these bolts out. And I'll explain. Now that we've got the seal plate off, as you can see, 
We're going to set this to the side and you see that we have the four bolts coming through. And we want to leave them as such because when we go to put this back on, we can just screw the seal plate back on. If we take these bolts completely out, it is a little difficult to line it up and get it through that hole because you've got to be precise. So if you want to make it easy on yourself, just leave these sticking out. And now we're going to go to the seal plate. And this is the seal plate. There's your seal. And then all we do is turn this upside down, get a screwdriver, and we can just tap it. And now that back part of the seal is out. We'll set that to the side. And now we've got our seal plate. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our seals. We've got two parts of the seal here, and we're gonna be putting this part in first. And remember, anytime you change seals, as long as you put them back in the same way you took them out, you'll be fine. But it is very important that we do not turn the seals backwards or put them in incorrectly because it will leak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some lube. We're gonna put it inside here. And the reason we wanna do that is it just allows us to put that ceramic part of the seal in and it'll go right in around that rubber jacket. And we can just push this in. She'll go in nice and smooth, no friction, slides right in. We can turn it over. We can see that we're all the way up against the back piece. Everything looks good. And now we're gonna be ready to put the seal plate back on the motor. But before we do so, it's very important to take note when we look at this, it's the same all the way around with the exception of down here. We've got a groove and we've got a groove. These two slots, that is the bottom of the pump. So do not put this on this way or this way. We wanna make sure that we put this facing down. And that is the correct way to put it on. And as we put this on, we're gonna line that up with the screws and we're going to take our nut driver with our star bit fitting and I'm just gonna start right here at the top and get it lined up. Once I get the first one caught, then I'm gonna come down to the bottom one. We're gonna make sure that that one catches, then we're gonna go to the other side. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting it on. We're not ready to tighten it yet until we get them all in. So now we've got the seal plate on, but what we've gotta do now is we've gotta tighten it. Okay, so now we've got that tightened, nice and snug. And this is also very important to note. If we go in the back, and we start to loosen to remove the seal plate. If for any reason it's hard to turn or this is not turning, we've got to be careful because sometimes this bolt can actually rust inside the grommet on the seal plate. And if we break that bolt and it's stuck inside here, then we're gonna end up having to replace this. And we don't wanna to have to do that. So in, in any event that we can't get these off or we're having a hard time, what you can do is you can take that shortcut and you can take your flathead screwdriver and stick it down in here between the rubber and the ceramic part and you're gonna pry it out. You just gotta be careful, we don't wanna damage this. You should be fine. If this gets damaged, we don't care because we're gonna take it out, we're replacing it anyway. But this is the shortcut, but the way I just showed you is the proper way to do it. But that's only if you can get these out, if there's no problem and most of the time they do come out. Okay, so now that we've got this together, we're gonna to be ready to put the other part of the seal on the impeller, but before we do so, I wanted to let you guys know if you have any questions, run into any problems, or you need help, check out my Patreon page. We're on my Patreon page. I do virtual service calls. I do one-on-one -on -one phone sessions, and I will be glad to help. So if any of you guys need that, check it out. Okay, so now we've got the impeller. And of course, at this time, we've made sure that we did remove everything. It looks good. The impeller's nice and clean. At the same time, we want to check in here and make sure that there's nothing stuck in here, that the impeller is free. It's not clogged. Looks good. And so now we're going to take this part of the seal. Now, this is very important. We've got this part of the seal in. And what we want to do before we put this part on is we want to put a little lube on our finger here. And we want to lubricate this shaft. So when we go to slide the seal on, there'll be no friction. And you're going to notice this is the side that has the rubber O-ring. And this is the metal side. The metal side always goes towards the impeller. Once we get this fitted, then she's going to slide on nicely because it is nice and tight. Now she's on. So metal goes against the impeller. And then, of course, we have the black carbon part of the seal that's actually gonna be facing out. And what we're gonna be doing when we screw this on, that is gonna actually be up against the white. So just remember the black part of the seal here goes against the white ceramic part. We've got this on, everything looks good. Now I'm gonna set this in place 
and I'm gonna tighten it up. There's several different things that we can do in regards to putting this on because it's just gonna keep spinning. So we can get our Allen key and we can lock it in place so that we can screw this on. But if we don't do that, the only thing we really need to do is plug this in one time. And if you'll take note of that impeller, watch that impeller when I plug this in. I'm gonna turn it on. It happens very quick, but it draws in and it's already tight. So the pump will actually tighten itself. So you can do that. And if not, you can just get the good old Allen key here and you can just tighten the impeller by hand until she's good and snug and then we're done. So we're gonna set that to the side. Now we're gonna come back to this part of the pump and what I'd like to do is just turn this up a little bit just so you guys can get a better view. We've got the O-ring that's in here. And what I like to do is I'm gonna make sure that this is good, it's nice and clean. You can take it off, make sure there's no debris on it. And then we can actually take the O-ring itself. Once we've inspected, everything looks good. We take a little bit of lube and we put a little bit of lube on here. That does protect the O-ring. It also allows the volute to go together to the seal plate without any friction and it'll slide right on. So now we're gonna put this in place, make sure she's good. Nice fit. We're gonna take the volute now and we're gonna turn it over and we're gonna make sure that this is nice and clean. There's no dirt and debris. Make sure everything looks good. And because we've got our O-ring already lubed, it'll slide right in here. When we put it together, it won't bind. There's no friction and it'll be a nice fit. We're gonna make sure we put this on the right way so that we have our discharge paint pointing up because if we turn this, it's gonna be the wrong way. We get this lined up just like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our screws. We're gonna drop our screws in. And then what I like to do is I like to put them in snug. We're just gonna get them started. And then this way, once we get it fitted good, then we can go ahead and snug it up and tighten it down evenly. We don't wanna tighten down one and then go all the way around. We wanna do it back and forth. Okay, now that I've got them pretty good and snug, we're just gonna go all the way around, make sure they're nice and tight. We don't want to over tighten, but when we do put this back on, it is preferred that you use a screwdriver and do it manually, not the drill, because you don't want to strip anything. This way you can get the right amount of torque on there and pull it in evenly. So we've got that set. This is on. Everything's nice and tight. Looks good. Now we're going to get our strainer pot and connect it to our volute. But before we do so, Remember that O-ring I told you about? We wanna make sure that we get a little bit of lube on our finger here. We wanna lube this O-ring as well. We can even wipe some excess lube around the outside. We're gonna put that O-ring on. We're just gonna slide it down. There is a groove there. It only goes down about a half inch. We're just gonna wipe that in there. I'm gonna take a little bit more lube. And now we're gonna come in here and we're going to put this lube in here as well. We want this to be nice and smooth. So this way, when we go to put this together, we don't have to worry about our O-ring rolling up or getting pinched. It'll slide right in. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this upright. Remember the four tabs. We don't have to depress them. All we've gotta do is line them up, wiggle it in gently. And once you get it positioned where you want it, you just hit it in place. Everything is done. And at this point, we obviously want to run the pump and check everything and make sure there's no leaks. We've got good connection with everything and then we're done. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps it up. So now you know how to change seals in the OptiFlow pump by Pentair. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget us at Hallmark Pool Supplies for all your pool needs. I definitely wanna take this time to thank all my subscribers as well as my patrons for your support of this channel. My name is Mark. I appreciate everybody watching. I'll see you guys next time.